Well, here is the thing about altruism. If you are truly altruistic, this means that you dip into your own pocket to give people things, right? True altruism is when you are charitable with your own resources. It's, it's a wonderful thing, right? Being altruistic about your own resources, recognizing that you owe something to your community because you're a member of that community, you're a member of that body politic. That's a good attitude to have. You know, it's a terrible attitude to have is when altruism actually amounts to I'm going to put my hand in your pocket and I'm going to give your money away and then I'm going to pat myself on the back for how altruistic I am. And unfortunately, an extraordinary amount of democratic policy, economic, environmental, foreign, enormous amounts of this, of this policy are predicated on the idea that you are most altruistic when you are putting your hand in somebody else's pocket and then giving away their money. When you are taking somebody else's life and affecting their life in a way that makes you feel good but it doesn't actually have any effect on you, but it makes you feel incredibly good because you are making Bob pay the bill. And let's face it, Bob deserves to pay the bill. You don't deserve to pay the bill. You're the good person. You're making Bob pay the bill. But so long as you are making Bob pay the bill, you owe no consequences. There, there, you don't have to actually be altruistic. You don't actually have to do anything. It's all up to you to make sure that somebody else does this thing. So much of left-wing policy is predicated on this very idea that the rules that you think should broadly apply to humanity and the consequences of which are not owned by you. Those rules are good so long as you promulgate them. And then the minute you are clocked in the face by a reality, the rules become really, really bad. This is true on tax policy. Democrats in blue states across the country will raise state taxes to extraordinary levels. And then they'll go to the federal government and they'll ask for state and local tax deductions. The idea being that you should be able to deduct your high taxes in the state of California, for example, against your federal income tax. Because after all, why should, the other states should pay for the fact that you've decided to raise taxes in your state when it comes to homelessness. Homelessness is a human right until precisely the moment the 10 cities arrive in Malibu. Environmental policy. Environmentalism is all wonderful and good, especially for people who live in areas where you don't. Meanwhile, you get to basically fly around in a private jet. Right? Environmentalism is a, is a luxury of the wealthy. And generally, the people who are most interested in environmentalism also have the largest carbon footprint because they also happen to be the most wealthy. And wealth goes along, in most cases, with a higher carbon footprint than people who are very, very poor. So this has now reared its head again with the issue of illegal immigration. The left, for my entire lifetime, has basically been soft on illegal immigration. They've suggested that illegal immigration, the free movement of people across America's southern border, and the ability of those people to then rely on the American welfare state, particularly on the state and local level, the ability of, of these folks to move across borders, to take jobs, to not pay their full share of taxes, to get free public education for their kids, to take advantage of the healthcare system. Right? All of these things are a good. And to oppose this is to be cruel and nasty. Now, here's the thing. Most of the people who are pressing this sort of policy, particularly the elite levels of the Democratic Party, never actually have to deal with the consequences. They feel as though they are creating a new voter base. People are coming in and they're more dependent on government. They tend to be poorer than the average in the United States. They tend to be less educated on the average in the United States. And thus, they are more dependent on government largesse in the United States. And so the idea was bring this entire new group of people in and these people are more likely to vote Democrat. This is how the demographics of California, for example, shifted from California being a red to purple state and now to a pure blue, deep blue, sea blue state. Okay, but here is the magic. In order to foment illegal immigration, what you really have to do is you have to suggest that border towns in Texas have to deal with it. And certainly not Barack Obama up in Martha's Vineyard, certainly not Kamala Harris over at the Naval Observatory in Maryland. Those people don't have to deal with it. Certainly not Eric Adams in New York City. The, the people, Lori Lightfoot in Chicago, those people don't have to deal with it because after all, the true altruism is making sure that the people down on the border in Texas who are saying, you know what, this is really screwing up our city. Those people are the bad guys. Greg Abbott is the bad one. Doug Ducey in Arizona, he's the bad one. The people along the border who say, you know, this is creating real societal and cultural problems and economic problems and crime problems. Those people are just, they're intolerant. They're bigots. They're bad. Because we're altruists, right? They're bad. We are the altruists. And so there is something extraordinarily ironic about the hue and cry that is now coming from top-level Democrats over the move by border state Republicans, Ron DeSantis in Florida, which technically is not a border state, but there's a lot of illegal immigration into Florida, or Greg Abbott in Texas, who have now been saying to Democratic governors and Democratic mayors, you know, guys, if you love illegal immigration so much, if you want to say that you are a sanctuary city without actually having to deal with the predominant force of illegal immigration, and guess what? You asked for it, 
you got it. And so Greg Abbott and Governor DeSantis, they've now been sending illegal immigrants to deep blue areas where they support sanctuary cities and open illegal immigration. They've been saying, now we'll see how much you like it. We'll see how, how altruistic you are when your hand is in your own pocket and not ours. We'll see how, we'll, we'll see how kind and charitable you are with your own resources and, and how much you like illegal immigration when it actually affects you. We'll see how much you enjoy defund the police when the criminals are sitting right side your house. Right? We'll see how much you enjoy homelessness. When again, there are people who are camped out in your front yard. We'll see how much you enjoy high tax rates when there is no state and local tax deduction. Making people own the consequences of their own political decision-making is a net positive. This is also true, by the way, intergenerationally. Democratic economic policy is predicated on the idea that you can steal from future generations and then you can use the money here. And this is not just true in the United States. This is true all over the world. The decline of Western economics is largely based on the fact that we have abandoned the sort of Burkean notion that you owe a debt to future generations, not the other way around, right? They owe a debt to you in the sense that they are supposed to inherit a stable and, and decent system, but they are not supposed to pay your bills. It, it is a, a fundamental fact of morality that a parent is supposed to provide for the child and that typically speaking, only in old age, our children supposed to provide for their parents. But the idea is that not, not that you burden your unborn grandchildren with debts they are never going to be able to pay. And yet we have broken that intergenerational barrier. We've, des we've destroyed that morality. And so now we have basically impoverished our children and grandchildren on the back of extraordinary levels of public and, yes, private debt here in the West. And that is why you're seeing low rates of economic growth across the West. And this has been true for at least a couple of decades. So making people own the consequences of their decisions in the here and now is a very good way of forcing better policy. So I'm very much in favor of Ron DeSantis, for example, sending a couple of charter planes of illegal immigrants to Martha's Vineyard. And what's hysterical about this, so there's video that emerged yesterday of this happening. Fox News had the video. Apparently, Governor DeSantis sent a couple of charter planes filled with illegal immigrants to Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts, right? It's the playground of the rich and famous Barack Obama should have plenty of place. I mean, he should have lots of room on his estate. He's got a 29.3 acre estate on Martha's Vineyard, which must have cost uh, a fairly large fortune. According to the governor's communications director, Taryn Fenske, she said, yes, Florida can confirm the two planes with illegal immigrants that arrived in Martha's Vineyard today were part of the state's relocation program to transport illegal immigrants to sanctuary destinations. States like Massachusetts, New York, and California will better facilitate the care of these individuals who they have invited into our country by incentivizing illegal immigration through their designation as sanctuary states and support for the Biden administration's open border policies. As you may know, in this past legislative session, the Florida legislature appropriated $12 million to implement a program to facilitate the transport of illegal immigrants from this state consistent with federal law. The office of Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker responded to the after hours email saying the Baker Polito administration is in touch with local officials regarding the arrival of migrants in Martha's Vineyard. At this time, short term shelter services are being provided by local offices. The administration will continue to support these efforts. Here's a little bit of the video of the charter planes arriving in Martha's Vineyard. But DeSantis has sent migrants on a plane to Martha's Vineyard. Now, this is where the Obamas have a home, Oprah, Beyonce, even James Taylor who's going to be seeing fire, rain, and migrants. Uh, not to mention Rosie O'Donnell. I mean, everybody, basically, that you know on the left has a home there. Do you think they're going to be embracing their new neighbors? <laughs> you know, these are all sanctuary cities until they're in their sanctuary. Right. I, I doubt they'll embrace them. Don't know that I've ever been to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, I've been to places where we've seen these migrants come across. This is not good for America. Uh, every town's a border town, and we need to make sure we get our southern border secured exactly like we did for four years, Jesse. Meanwhile, the Texas governor, Greg Abbott, is doing something similar with regard to Kamala Harris. According to Fox 5 DC, Fox News is reporting that two buses of migrants arrived on Thursday morning outside Kamala Harris's residence at the Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C. Approximately 100 migrants, mainly from Venezuela, arrived just before 7 a.m. from Del Rio, Texas, and were offloaded near the Naval Observatory's main guard gate. The migrants were picked up in Eagle Pass, Texas, and were sent by Governor Greg Abbott. Here's a little bit of Fox News' report. Buses filled with migrants from our southern border have just arrived outside Vice President Kamala Harris's residents at the Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C. Griff Jenkins is live on the scene to tell us more. Uh, Griff, uh, is that Massachusetts Avenue that I'm looking at right there? Yeah. Good morning, Steve, Ainsley, and Brian. This bus just arrived moments ago. I talked to some of the folks. Apparently, this bus has come from Del Rio, Texas. Okay, so the typical response in the media is, this is horrible. How could they do this? So just to get this straight, when a bus filled with migrants arrives in Del Rio, Texas, that's a net good 
for the United States. That's a, that's a good thing because forcing Del Rio, Texas to take all those people in is great. I remember a few years ago when there was a migration crisis under President Obama, there's a city in California called Murrieta and there are a bunch of residents there who are saying, don't take these buses here. Like we live here. We don't have the resources to take care of these people. They're just going to be sitting around in the bus station and we don't know who they are. We don't know their backgrounds. We don't know how to feed them. And the people of Murrieta were treated as though they were terrorists. Like how, how dare these people not just, I mean, don't we have a statue? And on that statue, it says that we should take in our tired, our weary, our huddled masses yearning to be free. Right? Don't, don't we have, I mean, the Statue of Liberty, the Statue of, okay. Now, this has been a typical Democratic talking point for a very long time, but it turns out that the Statue of Liberty is in New York. Right? Okay, fine. So if we send the migrants to New York, then presumably everything should be hunky-dory, right? If we send the illegal immigration wave that has been fostered by this administration, we're talking in excess of 1.3 million illegal immigrants have entered the country since Joe Biden took office. And that is not counting the gotaways, which could be up to another million. And when you have that many people who are arriving and they are swamping border towns, those towns don't have the resources for them. So why not send them? I mean, income inequality, guys. Equity. Why not send them to the richest enclaves in America, places like Martha's Vineyard? Why not send them to Malibu? Why not have them camp out outside Barbara Streisand's house? After all, if you're in favor of these policies, you should own the policies, should you not? You should be the person who's willing to pay for those policies. Should you not? You shouldn't be foisting them on the people who are unfortunate enough to live at the border that you have decided to leave wide open in complete defiance of basic governmental duty. The battle for the culture is heating up. We here at The Daily Wire are making some big moves. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell because you're not gonna wanna miss a single moment.